Do you know the person who really popularized spaced repetition? That's who you're looking at right here in this article. Peter Wozniak. And this is the article that really made him famous. This Wired article from 2008. Want to remember everything you'll ever learn? Surrender to this algorithm. And there's two really key diagrams that you'll see all over the internet. This one, and this is a picture of him. There's actually not a lot of pictures of him on the internet, but um, this you'll see everywhere and you'll see other renditions of this. Uh, and Ebbinghaus is the one who sort of did the initial research on it, but then it was picked up with Super Memo, which is his technology. So uh, the reason why this work is so important is because this is really what put spaced repetition on the map of people in the tech space. This is what led to Anki and other spaced repetition software. Uh, Super Memo was really the leader in the field. Uh, the issue, and, and Anki really emerged as a free version and a more extensible version, meaning plugins and stuff like that, uh, to this uh, Super Memo. And Sem Super Memo is a paid software that does have the older versions of it are for free. Um, it, it has somewhat of a steep learning curve. And I find that for most people, they're better off just using Anki. And that's what I use. But um, it is worth taking a look at Super Memo and, and giving it a free trial. Uh, there's a, a special a focus on uh, learning languages. And there's a whole website and online web thing that links to that. Uh, that where you can learn different languages within the algorithm. And a key piece of spaced repetition software is what is the algorithm that they're using? So whether you're using Quizlet, uh, whether you're using Duolingo uh, or Anki or Memasign or uh, any of the other sort of super memo alternatives or, or other apps that have come in the wake of super memo, um, they all have an underlying algorithm that determines basically every time you see a card, you try to think of the answer on the back of the flashcard. And then you click your space bar or you click a button on screen and you see the back of the flashcard. And then you grade it. It's basically a one to five scale, but think of it like A to F. A means this instantly came to mind. F means I didn't remember it at all. And based on whatever number you punch in there, the algorithm determines when should you next see this card. What it also determines is, let's say it says you need to see this card tomorrow. But let's say you're going on vacation for the next two weeks to Hawaii and you're not gonna take a look at this card again for 15 days. On day 15, what should happen? Should you now have a backlog of everything that you were supposed to look at over the past 14 days or 15 days? Or should you just pick up where you left off and pretend like two weeks didn't go by? Because those memories are decaying regardless of whether you go on vacation or not. If you're not getting the spaced repetitions according to the calendar that the or schedule that the program creates via the algorithm, then you're kind of your memories are still going to degrade at the same speed. So now do you need to see them more often? Like instead of looking at it after a week, should you now look at it after a day and then after three days and then it eventually gets back to once a week or, or a week and then a month after that? Like how should the scheduling change? based on you not sticking to the original schedule. So like, this is what happens when you have a bunch of schoolwork, you get sick for two weeks and it's like, do you go to the teacher and then work out some kind of like getting it all done over the next month? Or maybe you get to skip certain activities or certain projects and it just doesn't count on your grade. Like what are the adjustments that you make? So that's a key piece of the algorithm, the spaced repetition algorithm. And, uh, Wozniak did a lot of research on that. And he also has, he has a website, supermemo.com. He has a website, supermemo.guru. And on the supermemo.guru, he has basically a Wikipedia of his thoughts on a lot of different issues, extremely in depth. Like most of these Wikipedia articles are as long, if not longer than like the medium to long articles on Wikipedia. So, uh, and they're quite detailed. So, 
uh, there's a huge amount of work there and he's introduced a lot of concepts. Incremental reading is another big concept that he's introduced. Um, and that's built into super memo. So it's basically a way of creating flashcards as you read by highlighting stuff. And I've got some criticisms of that and I'll have that in a separate video. Basically my overall approach is I, and I talked, if you watch my interview with, uh, pre rock Juthani, who's, uh, made a lot of Anki videos, he's found and I've found that if you're just doing these closed deletions, which means basically just taking a chunk, one or two words out of a sentence, and then doing the flashcard becomes a fill in the blank. Even though that can work and does work, you're giving yourself too many clues. There's too much context. And so when you're asked a question without context, where it's more of like a short answer question on a test, then, or just in a real life situation where somebody says, Hey, what do you do in this situation? Or what should we do here? You don't have all the context of the fill in the blank. And so you end up, uh, it ends, your memory may not be strong enough to pass a test like that or pass, answer a question like that. So that's my basic criticism of, ex of incremental reading. That doesn't mean it doesn't work and uh, you should give it a try. Um, it's part of the cutting edge right now in 2022 of where accelerated learning is going, how you turn reading into flashcards. This is something that's uh, been quite popular in the uh, med uh, student community and I coach med students and doctors, law students and lawyers, and this is really big in those communities, but especially grew a lot in the med study community of preparing for the USMLE step one and other standardized tests within med school, as well as just the med school tests. And uh, I have a course on that I did on the USMLE step one um, before it went to pass fail. Um, and so a lot of work has been done there and uh, some of that's been brought over to the uh, just accelerated learning community at large. So people like pre rock Juthani um, have helped sort of bring some of that stuff over. And, uh, and so we'll be seeing more of that. But that's, uh, this is a really important uh, article to read to get sort of a historical sense of Ebbinghaus and the initial work that he did with sort of learning nonsense words, which is just coming up with a word of random syllables and seeing what repetition uh, cycle or scheduling algorithm worked best. Um, and then tracing that to Wozniak, him doing a lot of like academic work on this. And then more recently, not really publishing as much academically anymore and just publishing on his own online. And, uh, and this really sets the basis of, I'd say the last 10 to 15 years of the online accelerated learning community, this has been a key touchstone. So uh, anytime you watch a video where somebody has a graph or a diagram looking like this one, 99.9% .9 chance this is where they got the original idea and then they sort of just traced it out in something else but this is uh this is the key piece you got the spacing effect here and so there's been all kinds of research on this but um yeah this is a key article this set a lot of things off and uh especially in the crossover between the accelerated learning community and sort of the tech and silicon valley community so this is big and uh i recommend you re read it check it out. That's it for this video. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Uh, what kind of effect do you think this had on the accelerated community at large? Uh, what you think the uh, follow along uh, impact of this article has been? Do you disagree with me? Do you think there's other articles that have been more impactful than this one? Um, especially in the spaced repetition and active recall uh, aspects of things. Also, let me know what you think about ex incremental reading. Um, let me know what you think about the sort of close deletion approach versus the sort of open-ended question approach where there's less context. 
And also make sure you take a look at my interview with Pirak Juthani because he has a lot of really high quality work on his own YouTube channel and has just done uh, important work on on the real details of creating high quality flashcards and uh, integrating context within flashcards and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's also videos on YouTube from Wozniak himself of him show explaining, you know, showing incremental reading. And I'll, I'm going to do videos on just incremental reading in general. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have thoughts on any of that stuff. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to get more stuff like this. Make sure you're on my email newsletter if you want to get all the updates on the different things I'm doing on different platforms. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.